Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK, back at you with another video here, breaking the six game NBA main set on Friday. A couple things before getting in the video. If you're new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos talking about NBA DFS as well as NFL DFS. I'm also uh, running a weekly $20 PayPal giveaway on my channel. How it works, all you have to do is leave a like and a comment in the video. That's one entry in the giveaway. Max one comment below per video. Uh, so start with my Monday night uh, NBA video that I uploaded a few days ago. We'll go throughout the week. We'll end my Monday night video at the end of the week. So however many videos I've uploaded for the week, you end up the giveaway that many times. So say, I have, for example, if I have 10 videos uploaded for the week, you end up the giveaway 10 times. And again, the winner sees $20 PayPal for myself. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So uh, last night was one of those nights. It was just a complete swing and a miss, a swing and a miss by me. Um, I was super high on that Golden State Minnesota game, and Steve Kerr decided to run with the bench unit way more than we have seen. The starters in Golden State had been getting, you know, um, all over thirty plus minutes the past few games, and then uh, yeah, he just decided to run the bench unit. Uh, Alec Burks got five fouls, uh, very tilting. On the Minnesota side, is a little bit better. Shabazz is pretty solid for me. Covington was good, um, but just all in all, you know, the, those Golden State guys really killed me. I had way too much exposure there, so. Uh, definitely one of my worst nights uh, of the year for NBA so far. And I do apologize if I, if I talked you guys on to some of those guys. I did not expect that type of rotation for Golden State. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's how it goes in DFS. So uh, the good thing is there's always another day. There's always a, another slate to look forward to. So, again, I do apologize if I talked you guys on some Golden State guys. But uh, let's see if we can uh, get some money back here for this uh, six-game NBA slate. Uh, before we get into players and their prices, Let's take a look at some numbers right now. Um, Portland, Washington, I guess they took the over-under. A lot of these aren't out right now, um, but or at least the over-unders are. So uh, uh, Portland favored by 5.5 here. I assume that's going to be a pretty high one. Washington, uh, the worst uh, defensive team in the league. we got 76ers, Rockets, uh, uh, Houston favored by 4.5 points. Knicks, Suns, uh, the Suns are favored by 6.5. And, and then Pelicans, Lakers is at 223.5. The Lakers are by 10.5 points. This game in general is just a revenge game narrative. Um, a lot of guys, you know, playing the former team with Anthony Davis, with, you know, uh, Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart. It's just, yeah, that whole game is a revenge game. But, okay, let's, uh, as always, we'll start center. And at the top is Anthony Davis. So he gets a revenge game spot against his former team and one of the best possible matchups. Now, he's been... Uh, you know, uh, not as good recently, 43, 42, 44, and 45. It was LeBron who had that big night the other night. He had like 70-plus fantasy points, I believe. Um, at at 10.3K, I think Anthony Davis is fairly priced, and um, it's a really good spot for him, and a revenge team, too. Now, the, the one concern is there is a little bit of wall risk. It's at the Lakers. Lakers are obviously one of the better teams in the NBA. Pelicans, not so much. So, again, it's a really good spot, but there is a little bit of wall risk. Um, I'm perfectly fine if you land on Anthony Davis's spend up. No issue there at all. Whiteside, so they finally decided to raise the price on this guy. 9.5K. Um, I think that uh, he's priced about right now. Maybe a little bit overpriced, to be honest. 9.5. I expected him to be like, you know, high 8s, maybe low 9s. Um, the reason why I still think he is in play here is because this is the best possible spot against Washington. Literally the best spot. So, and, again, I talk about a lot with the Washington front court. They're super, super thin. Um, so I actually think uh, Whiteside is still in play. Now, he's definitely more contrarian option for sure. Like, if I was playing cash games, I don't think I would play Whiteside at that price. Like, why would you play Whiteside when you get Embiid for $100 less in a good spot against Houston or, like, Anthony Davis a little bit more? But I still think he is in play as a contrarian GPP option because of the matchup and because his meds have been so consistent. Joel Embiid, again, the reason why I think Whiteside is more contrarian because Embiid really stands out at this price. 9.4 in a game here um, against the uh, Rockets. Capella, not the best defender, or Hardenstein, whoever they throw on or try to throw on him. Embiid should have his way. He's been pretty consistent, and, um, you know, we know he's basically at a floor of like 40, 45 with upside of, you know, 60 plus. So I think Joel Embiid really stands out as a good option there at that price. Vucevic at 8K. So. This is not really the best spot, but we have Jonathan Isaac, that scary injury. He's going to be out for a couple of months. Prayers up to him. And we have Aaron Gordon questionable. If both, if Aaron Gordon is out too, uh, Orlando is super thin. Uh, I, I guess they start Ken Birch. They, they kind of ran uh, him at the power forward. Uh, either way, uh, you know, Orlando just wouldn't have a lot of guys they can look to for offense. So Vucevic would really stand out there if Aaron Gordon is out as well. 
a Julius Randle. So I've been playing him a lot recently, uh, and his price actually came down to 7.7K. And this is a really good spot against Phoenix. The minutes have been consistent. Now, the game against Portland, uh, I believe that was a blowout. Yes, well, yeah, it was. So he would have got, you know, he's been playing, you know, 35-plus, uh, you know, every single night, basically. And if DeAndre Ayton gets inserted into the starting lineup, that's even better news for Randle. Like, like Aaron Baines is a pretty solid defender, but... You know, if if um, Aiden gets inserted in the starting lineup, that is really good news for Randall. So um, I still think I, I like him at 7.7K, but he would get more of a boost if Aiden does start. Bam at a bio. Um, you know, again, not really the best spot here against Orlando, but uh, his price tag makes him firmly in play. John Collins at 7.5. We have Trey Young coming back. It's not really the best spot. He's been a little bit up and down, so I think he's in play as a contrarian option for a GPP it's just because of the price, right? Like he was. 8.4, 8.7. Now he's down, back down to 7.5. So, um, yeah, for as a one lineup guy, I don't think I'm going to go there, but I think he is, you know, in play as a contrarian option, kind of like Hassan Whiteside. DeAndre Eaton, so this is uh, kind of dependent on whether or not he starts. Now, uh, he came off the bench play 32 minutes. So, I'd assume he's going to be inserted back in the starting lineup. We'll see. Um, either way, at, at this price point in a spot against the Knicks, uh, Knicks don't play a whole lot of defense. So, I would have uh, a decent amount of interest there in Eaton if he does pick up a start. Capella, man, they are, they're really tempting me with this price. Like, really tempting me. 6.9K for Clint Capella. Um, that just seems way, way too cheap. Now, it's one of the toughest spots here against the beat, and there is some foul trouble risk. And it, it doesn't really help that uh, Hardenstein has been playing really well. Um, you know, in 18 minutes against Denver, had 35 fantasy points, a double-double, 16 and 12. So that doesn't really help, but... I don't know. I, I think in a close game, I still think like Capella gets up about 35 or so. And at that price of 6.9, it just stands out. So I don't want to play him, but the price is really tempting me there. Uh, Derek Favors is 6.2K. I think stands out as a really solid play as well. Uh, 30, 30, 27, and 35 minutes uh, the last four games. And uh, he's been really consistent. I know it's not really the best spot here, but uh, you're just betting on the talent and the minutes right now. Like the minutes have been so consistent for him. So uh, yeah, anytime you can project him or project him to get 30, 30 plus, you got to have uh, interest. And his price came down to six point two. So I do like Derek Favors a good amount at that price. Horford, what what happened? You, if you guys played that early slate a couple days ago, what the heck happened with those Philadelphia guys? No Embiid, and it was just a complete bust. By like everyone besides I think Josh Richardson and maybe Ben Simmons had a decent game, but. Horford and Tobias is completely busted with no no Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid back. Um, yeah, I will not be going there. Mitchell Robinson at 5.8. One of those guys that you can always take a shot at in GPPs. I, I don't see myself getting there, though. Ennis Cantor, kind of the same thing. He had, in 23 minutes, 47 fancy points in the game against Charlotte. Um, this is a pretty good spot here. The price tag, it, it just makes him tricky, right? Like, I can't feel confident for cash games because he's not going to play more than, like, 22, 23 minutes, but he is a guy that, you know, does, can get you uh, upside in that limited time. So I think he is in play for GPPs. Mahimi at 5.1K is fine. I don't see myself getting there though. I just like more like other centers. I think I have more upside for, you know, a bit more. Hardenstein at 4.5. I know he's been really good. I know he's been good, really good on a per minute basis. I just, in a close game, I don't know how many minutes he's get, he gets, right? If this game says close, I don't know if he plays more than like 10 to 15. So that, I need to see him play uh, minutes consistently uh, before I can, you know, target him with confidence. So you could always go there, take a shot there for GPPs. You know, maybe Capella gets in foul trouble, but I can't recommend it with confidence for cash games. Uh, Alex Len at 4.3K. Um, he's been pretty decent here, 20 and 24 minutes, 19 and 37 fantasy points. The price is cheap. Uh, we do have Trey Young coming back though, so that definitely hurts his upside. One of those guys where... I think it's fine for GPPs. Um, yeah, like I said, Trey Young does limit his upside, though, a, a good amount. Like, he doesn't have huge upside, in my opinion, playing alongside Trey Young and John Collins. Dwight Howard, a 4.2, probably not for me. Baines' mitts are, are going down with the 8 and back. I don't think I can go there. Bobby Portis is intriguing at 4.1. He probably gets, you know, 20 to 25. I don't mind that. Now, Ken Burch at 3.9K, they used him... Um, as kind of the four there with uh, Jonathan Isaac out, he played 26 minutes, 24 fantasy points. Now, this guy is not really the highest usage guy, but at below 4K, if he's going to start and get like 
25 to 30 minutes. I think he stands out as a pretty decent value option there. I also don't mind Daniel Tice at 3.8. Um, you know, he, he's going to get around the same minutes as Cantor, like, you know, around 20 or so, maybe a little bit more. And he's up price under 4K. So I think he, he's viable as a cheap option as well. Uh, JaVel McGee, I actually don't mind this either. Um, now, he's a guy that's not going to play big minutes. He'll get like around 15 or so normally. But in this up of game with the Pelicans, um, I think you can go there at this price. 3.5K, I don't think he's going to kill you. So I do have some interest in JaVel McGee as well. And even AP here, again, I'm not going to try to pronounce his uh, last name, but they're super, super thin up front. Uh, it's basically just Mahimi and him, and uh, he's had 24, 19, 18, and 24 minutes. Now, he's been a little bit up and down, 39, 23, and 20, but at basically min price, I think he stands out as a pretty good value option. Now, the thing that hurts is he is um, he is only a center, so that eats up one of your valuable center spots, and there's a lot of good center plays today, so that is the one downside. But at this price point, I think he's very, very much in play as a value option. And that is, that's all I got for center. So let's move on to power forward. Um, Tatum at 8.2 is fine. I think I would like him more if Kemba Walker gets ruled out. We have Kemba right now listed as questionable. He's giving me game time decision. decision. So that's obviously something we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, I would like Tatum a lot more if Kemba does get ruled out. Now, Brandon Ingram, this is where I'm a little bit torn. Like the price is really good for him. The price is, is solid for Drew Holiday. I don't mind Lonzo Ball. Uh, it's a tough spot, but, you know, a revenge game narrative for uh, him, Lonzo, Josh Hart, and he's been their go-to guy. He's had, uh, you know, over 40 fancy points the last four games. Again, I know this is not a good spot, but the price tag and the minutes, I think, might make him very, very much in play. So I'm a little bit undecided what I want to do with Brandon Ingram. Um, if, you know, I think it can go like one of two ways. If I'm going to, if I have confidence this game stays close, I'll probably try and stack it, you know, maybe play Anthony Davis or LeBron, one of those two, and run it back with a Pelican or two, or maybe just fade it in general, hope the game blows out. Um, yeah, so right now I'm a little bit undecided, but there are some appealing plays in that game for sure. Gordon Hayward, kind of the same analysis with Tatum. I would like him a lot more if Kemba uh, gets rolled off. Kemba's in. I don't know if I want to go there at 7K. Oubre at 6.8. Uh, his price tag's not moving. Uh, 41, 40, 36 minutes, 53, 49, and 45 fan points. Now, he's been playing great. He's been shooting the ball really well. I don't think we can expect like 50 fancy points on a, on a night-to-night basis from Kelly Oubre, but his price tag is not moving. And this is a good spot against the Knicks, and the minutes have been really secure the last three games. So I think you can very, very much target Kelly Oubre here at this price. I think he's standing right now for his level of production. He is way underpriced. Uh, Carmelo was a guy I liked uh, in the revenge game spot against the, the Knicks there at 35. This is a really good spot against Washington, but his price is coming up to 6.7. Uh, I don't see myself getting there. Like I think I'd prefer playing Kelly Oubre over him for hundred dollars more. Tobias Harris again. What the what the hell was that the other day with no Embiid? Him and Al Horford. Like, who? Yeah, with, with with everyone with Embiid back now, it just I can't do that. Uh, Favors again. I talked about really liking him at that price. Marcus Morris at five point six is okay if you land on him. Um, I think he does get over thirty minutes in a close game, so I don't mind him. Again, I think my preferred target would be a guy like Julius Randle, but I'm fine with Marcus Morris. Aaron Gordon, obviously, this is pretty significant. If he misses, then that's just a boost to a lot of those other Orlando guys, right? I think Ken Birch probably gets into the starting lineup. Um, you know, just a usage boost to guys like Busevich and Fournier. So, um, yeah, that's obviously pretty big. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Kuzma, 5.2. I think it's just a little much for him right now. I know he's been, you know, pretty decent recently, but... I can't pay 5.2K for Kuzma with Anthony Davis and LeBron healthy. A DeAndre Hunter 4.2, I don't mind that. I know Trey Young's coming back, but uh, besides the game against Milwaukee, he's at 39, 30, and 35 uh, minutes. He's a guy that is a little bit up and down, right? He's not very trustworthy, but at this price, he doesn't have to do a whole lot to get you there. So I think he is in play as a value guy for sure. Uh, PJ Tucker 3.9K. I'm not a big P.J. Tucker guy, but his price is coming to a point where it is playable. Now, I know he hasn't been good recently, right, 19, 11, 18, and 15. But what we know with P.J. Tucker is the minutes will be there no matter what, 38, 37, 33, 34. I think he's basically going to get around 35 or so, maybe a little bit more. And at a price of under 4K, I think he is another one of those value guys you can consider. Let's see. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., 3.9K, kind of the same thing. Uh, not a guy that has huge upside, but the Mets are been pretty secure for him, so I think he's fine if you land on him. 
Jabari Parker, the Mets have been way down on him. Uh, I, I can't do it even at that price. Let's see, uh, other options. I think Emil Jefferson actually got a little bit of a run. Yeah, he got, what, 13 minutes the last game. We'll see, because they, you never know, they could start him at the four, and if they do, I would like him a lot as a value play. If you guys follow me in the Summer League, um, or just like, you know, in the preseason, he is a guy that, you know, he is pretty productive when he gets time. So I would uh, definitely consider him if he starts, for sure. If he comes off the bench, I wouldn't feel as great about the minutes. So we'll see uh, what Orlando ends up doing there with the starting lineup. Kelly Ho, I think he's out of the rotation now. Yeah, he is literally like out of that Miami rotation now. But yeah, that is that's what I got here for power forwards. Let's move to small forward. Uh, LeBron, uh, he had the huge game the last game, seventy three fancy points. He's been a little bit more consistent than Anthony Davis. Uh, a great spot here. So I have no issue with LeBron. No no issue with Anthony Davis. If you think this game stays close, you're probably going to want to target some pieces in this game. So. Both those guys' spend ups I do like. Um, again, there's a lot of value guys I talked about where I think, as of right now, I think I'm leaning more towards the Saras and Scrubs approach just because I think there are some pretty solid value plays. So, yeah, I think LeBron makes it a pretty good spend up there. Uh, ben Simmons at 8.1. This is, you know, an off tumble game against Houston. And I, I just like playing him because he's a guy that fills up a stat sheet. I, you know, the, the guys that get the peripheral stats, when they have a good shooting night, they can have that huge ceiling game because. They're still going to get the peripheral stats, peripheral stats, sorry, I can't talk, on a bad night. But when they're shooting really well, that's when they can have like that huge upside game. And at 8.1K, very much in play. Jimmy Butler at 7.8. So him and Bam, um, you're betting on the talent here. It's I wouldn't say it's a bad matchup. It's a mediocre matchup. But there's just a lot of guys in better matchups on the slate. But, again, the price tag for Bam is cheap. The price tag for Jimmy is cheap. So, um, I'm perfectly fine if you, if you land on those guys. Uh, if you're going more like a balanced approach, uh, no issue with that. Let's see. Uh, Fournier. So I'm not a big Evan Fournier guy, but if Aaron Gordon does get ruled out, they would just be super, super thin. Basically just be him and Vucevic. So I would have some interest in him, actually, if Aaron Gordon does get ruled out. If Aaron Gordon gets ruled in, I don't think I would go Fournier. Josh Richardson, a 5 point case. So he had the, the one decent game there against Indiana. Um, he's been playing consistent minutes. I think he, he's perfectly fine if you land on him, but I'm not going to go out of my way to play him. Troy Brown. So the secondary Washington pieces, I don't see myself getting there unless Brad Beal gets ruled out. Now, if I had to guess, I would say Brad Beal does play, but if he does get ruled out, that's when you can, can consider those secondary like guards and wings for Washington. Even a guy, like Terrence Ross, um, Again, I'm not a huge Terrence Ross guy, but if Aaron Gordon gets ruled out, they, they just they don't have a whole lot of guys that can score the ball. And I think Terrence Ross probably gets 25 to 30 minutes, and at 4K, he would have to do a lot offensively. So I think he'd be someone I would very much consider as well if uh, Aaron Gordon gets ruled out. Josh Hart at 3.9K. Again, it's a revenge spot. I actually don't mind this either. Again, there's a lot of pretty solid value plays in my opinion that's why like i'm leaning more towards the stars and scrubs approach because there's a lot of guys like in this you know three to four k range that i think are very much in play josh hart 30 26 and 26 minutes in three straight games now he shot the ball really bad last game 0 of 8 but the minutes have been there it's a revenge spot and yeah he's priced under 4k so another one of those value guys i think is very very much in play eric gordon with Harden and westbrook you know both available. Not super excited about that. He can get you there, uh, you know, in limited time, but he is, he's pretty scoring to penny. He's got to put the ball through the basket to get you there. Let's see. Baysmore at 3.5 K I think is, I think makes her an interesting value play as well. I, I know I say that I've been saying that about a lot of these guys, but it, it just, they just are. That's why I'm leaning more towards the stars and scrubs approach right now. Uh, you know, the Mets have been a little bit up and down 24, 28, 22 and 29. But in this spot, you know, against Washington, and at 3.5K, if he gets, you know, 25 or so minutes, another one of those value guys I think is very much viable. Wesson Woundu, I mean, he has been starting, but I just, I don't think I can go there. He's a very, very low usage guy. He had a, a pretty good game that last game against Washington, but that was Washington. Uh, even at this price, I still don't think I could do it. I would just prefer some of those other value guys.
But that's what I got for small forward. So let's move on to shooting guard. Uh, let's see. Harden at the top at 10.9. I think stands out as a, as a pretty solid spend up. Um, you know, it's not really the best spot, but I do like the price tag in Harden. So, um, yeah, I think he's very much in play there as a spend up. And, again, there's a lot of really solid value plays in my opinion. So um, the, these uh, stars are very, very much in play. Brad Beal at 8.5. I like the price a lot on him. Now, the concern is, obviously, he's questionable dealing with, what, leg soreness. I, I'd assume he, he would go. Now, the game went to Orlando, kind of blew out, only got 30 minutes. Um, in a close game, I do think he gets, you know, 35-plus, and he's at 8.5K. This is a pretty cheap price tag for Brad Beal. So I have a good amount of interest in Beal. Um, again, we got to keep an eye on that injury. Uh, even a guy like Devin Booker at 7.9K. 38, 41, 38, 37 minutes. So the minutes for him and Kelly Uber have been really, really secure recently. This is, again, a good spot against the Knicks, and he's been really consistent. 44, 54, 50, and 44. So, um, you know, and he's priced under 8K. So there, there. I think he is another guy that is, is very much in play. I do like him a good amount. Uh, Drew Holiday at 7.4K. So this is one where, again, the, these Pelicans guys, him, Ingram, uh, Favors, are all a bit underpriced in my opinion. It's a really tough spot. But if you're a guy that's going to be playing like a couple of those Lakers, you're probably going to want want to run it back one, one or two of these guys. Because um, if that game stays close, if this game stays close, I think you know one or two of, of Drew, Ingram, and Favors will probably have to have a big game. So um, that's whether or not you think this game stays close. If you think the game blows out, which is definitely a possibility, you, you probably fade the game overall, and then you target some of these other guys. Again, I talked about a lot of guys that I think are very much viable. Uh, but if you think that game stays close, you're probably going to want to target some of those uh, Pelicans guys. CJ at 7.1K. So the price tags went way up for Lillard and Whiteside, but CJ's price hasn't really moved. Again, one of the best possible spots here is Washington. So uh, he's viable there in the mid-range if you're going more balanced approach. McCray at 58 with, you know, with Beal most likely playing, I don't see myself getting there. Now, if Beal gets ruled out, then that would be a different story. Then I would target some of these other Washington guys. Marcus Smart. So this is pretty big news. If Kemba gets ruled out, I would like Marcus Smart a good amount. Um, you know, just him playing the point guard just really uh, raises his ceiling, in my opinion. And again, a really good spot against Atlanta. So if Kemba does get ruled out, I would uh, um, really, really like Marcus Smart there. Markel Fultz, don't mind him at 4.9, but I just think I'd prefer some of those other Magic guys. Avery Bradley had a big game, but I don't trust it. Um, let's see. Wanamaker's guy that maybe gets a little bit extra run, but I still don't know if I would go there. Again, I've talked about a lot of value guys in the slate. I, I still, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't do that unless he gets inserted in the starting lineup. A guy like Anthony Simons at 3.8K has been getting, you know, Pretty consistent run, about 25 or so minutes. He's also been, you know, a little bit up and down, but he's kind of in the same range as Bazemore. Both those guys, I think, get around 25, and it's a really, really good spot. So those two are, are viable for sure. Tyler Hero, 3.7K. Um, how many oh, sorry, how many minutes did he get last or tonight? I want to see that. Because this is a really, really cheap price tag, but I want to see how many minutes he played. He played 33 minutes. Okay, so, um, yeah, obviously the minutes have been a little bit up and down on him. 27, 22, 34, 20, and then tonight he played 33. But he's at 3.7K. So, yeah, add that to the list of value guys you can take a shot on. Um, I will, at the end of this video, I will go over a lot of the value guys and maybe try and rank them for you guys as of right now because I know I've said I like a lot of the value guys, but I think there's there's a lot of guys that are very much in play here. Um, let's see. I already talked about LeBron and Harden. A uh, Lillard, again, his price, him and Whiteside's price have, have come up. Uh, it's a really good spot, but it's hard for me to get to Lillard. I don't know. I, I think it, it makes it more of a contrarian option, kind of like Whiteside. Like, it, it just makes it hard to play if you're playing more cash games when you have guys like Harden, LeBron, and Bead, uh, Anthony Davis, like, I don't know, Brad Beal for a lot less. So it makes it more of a contrarian option. Trey Young, kind of the same thing. It's a really tough spot, but we know the upside is huge in Trey Young. Even in a bad matchup, like this price tag makes him very much in play. Now, you know, obviously the ankle injury does worry me a little bit, but, um, you know, if he's not going to be limited, I think he stands out as a pretty solid uh, tournament play. Westbrook at 9K. He's been really consistent. 40, 40, 38, 34 minutes. Um, again, not really the best spot, but if you land on him at this price, I have no issue with that. Kemba, so this is pretty big news. If he misses, 
Marcus Smart standing out as a really solid play in the mid-tier, and then you could look to those other wings like Hayward, Brown, Tatum. Ricky Rubio at 7.2 is fine. Um, you know, he's been a little bit up and down. The minutes have been a little bit up, up more up and down with him too. I think I'd feel a little bit more confident targeting Booker and Ubre just because their minutes have been really secure compared to Rubio, who's been a little bit more up and down. Alfred Payton is questionable. This is pretty significant. I'll talk about a couple of those uh, cheap Knicks point guards. Lonzo Ball got a revenge game narrative. The price came way up after that huge game. I would not expect 65 again from Lonzo, but, um, you know, he could be out for revenge here. So, uh, you know, him, Drew, Ingram, Favors, I think those guys you can take shots on if you think the Pelicans keep this game close. Let's see. Um, Rondo at 4.3. That's only for GPP system. That's been down. It, it's a good spot. But he had one fancy point that last game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just like him more when he's playing, obviously, into the mid-20s minutes. He's played 18, 18, 15. So that's only like a dart throw for GPPs. Ish Smith. So his minutes have been, you know, pretty decent last couple. 31 and 28. Um, if he's going to continue to play close to 30 minutes, I think he's another one of those value guys that is very much in play. And then uh, Nilakina here at 3.2. He stepped up, played 23 minutes that last game when uh, I believe Alfred Payton got, wait, did Alfred Payton get hurt or did he just get limited minutes wise? I forget. I think, yeah, he just got limited minutes wise. But, but Nilakina played well. If Alfred Payton misses, you could definitely look to Nilakina as a value guy. Um, I believe, wait, let me go to the next really quick. Dennis Smith Jr. is also questionable. So, if both Dennis Smith Jr. and uh, Alpha Payton get rolled out, I think Dylan Kino would be in line for some decent minutes. And at that price, he stands out as another one of those value guys you can take a shot on. Uh, but that is it. So, I, again, guys, I know I talked about a lot of value guys. I'll try and rank them here. Um, let's see. So, let's go like 4.5K and below, I guess, for value guys. So, not really interested in some of these guys up top. Let's see. Ish Smith, I think, is very much viable. DeAndre Hunter. Um, Terrence Ross at 4K. Don't mind P.J. Tucker. Don't mind Derek Jones Jr. Uh, Ken Birch, if he starts, I would like him. Wanamaker, you know, if Kemba gets ruled out. Josh Hart at that price point. Simons and Bazemore. Uh, Dino Tice, I don't mind. Tyler Hero, 3.7. Um, JaVale McGee, even at 3.5. J.J. Redick at 3.4, his minutes have been way, way down. But he's at 3.4K. I guess I kind of glossed over that. But he's a guy that in 20 minutes, he can knock down some threes. Like, I'm, just add that to the list of value guys. AP at 3.2. Like, he's almost min-price. Nilakina. So, I, I guess it is kind of hard to, to rank these guys because there's a lot of like news up in the air. But, yeah, like, if... If both, um, or if Aaron Gordon gets ruled out, I think, you know, either Ken Birch or, or Jefferson, whoever starts the standout, is a pretty good option. Um, you know, I think AP, even at that price, uh, is, a, is a pretty solid option. Um, yeah, Tyler Hero played 33 minutes. He's under 4K. I think he stands as a really good option at that price. Yeah, like I said, there's just a lot of value guys that are, are very much viable on the slate. As far as spend-ups go, um, I think if you're playing more of a cash game approach, I think, you know, Embiid stands out a lot at that price. I think, um, you know, one of either LeBron James or Anthony Davis in a really, really good spot. Don't mind Harden either. Uh, again, Beal at that price. So that's kind of the way I would go if I'm looking more cash game. Now, again, if you're going, I think mid-tier is going to be very, very constrained today just because there's a lot of value guys, a lot of solid spend-ups. But there are, if you want to go mid-tier, and more contrarian, that I don't mind that either. There are a lot of guys that I think stand out as decent options as well, like uh, Ben Simmons at 8.1, Vucevic if Aaron Gordon gets ruled out, Devin Booker's been really consistent, Jimmy Butler's priced under 8K, a lot of those Pelicans guys, um, DeAndre Ayton at 7.3, Clint Capella's really cheap. So I feel like almost everyone is underpriced on the slate. That's why it kind of makes it tricky. But um, yeah, we do have some news to monitor, so... Um, it is important to follow me on Twitter, guys, that will be in the description below, as well as check out my live stream. I'll probably be live streaming 45 minutes before locking the YouTube channel, uh, so be sure to check it out. 
Um, but I think that's new for today's video, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content, would really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe again. If you want to get entered in the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a like and a comment in the video. That's one shit in the giveaway. Um, again, I'll be back for another video to break down the NBA slate on Saturday. I will also have a video up for the wild card uh, NFL slate probably right after this. So be on the lookout for that if you're an NFL guy. But thanks again for having to come and check out the video. Um, and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow in the live stream.